<sighs> the Vase Gold Knights lose to the Washington Capitals, uh, the Logan Thompsons, the Alex Ovechkins, whoever, honestly, at this point, because both of those guys, <laughs> oh my goodness, what incredible seasons they're having. Five to two to finish the first, you know, independent clause of that sentence. All I'm gonna say is you're welcome, rest of the NHL, rest of the league, hockey fans everywhere, especially those of Ovechkin, who are eagerly awaiting for him to take over Gretzky's record as the best goal scorer of all time in NHL history, because it's true, even without breaking the record, you could make that argument. But you know, we got him three goals closer to that. He's now, what, 30 away? Yeah, he could do it this year at this pace, especially he leads the league in goals. A rocket Richard for this guy at this age? Oh, wow, incredible. So you're welcome. We are the good guys in this situation. Vegas just wanted uh, Ovechkin to have that record. You know, we let him have his first Stanley Cup in our building in five games. It's just, it's, you know, Vegas just really leaning into how much we love Alex Ovechkin. You know what else Vegas is leaning into? How much we love Logan Thompson. <laughs> because he is now 2-0 against us. And yes, he's like 8-0-1 this season. Uh, incredible, incredible year from him. And uh, as much as people, especially fans that want to say, we traded him at the ta autograph table during the draft. No, that's not what happened. We traded him in the morning of that happened. He still chose to do it because he's a stand-up guy so, uh, like, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, discrepancy there with some of the remarks that he made about Vegas after he left, which I don't hold against him. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I really like the dude. It, he's not the one that got away because he asked for the trade. Um, he didn't outright admit it. He said that was between him and the front office and then <laughs> McCrimmon just was like, yeah, he asked for one. From one perspective, I don't blame him. He thinks that he's a bona fide starter and so far this year in a contract year where he's making almost league minimum, he is proving that he is an NHL starter quality goalie uh, caliber and I'm rooting for him. I wasn't last night, uh, which <laughs> fat low that did, but uh, no, he, he's doing great. He's having a good season and I, I'm happy for him. I think he had a point. We did pull him in the series against Dallas after he had the start in net because we lost uh, to Dallas at home. And even though he wasn't the problem, shake up the, uh, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, there were a couple of times last season where we started Hill multiple times in a row, even though I thought we were doing a 1A, 1B situation. And so if that was the case, and Logan Thompson was led to believe that, I understand him asking for a trade. And we have been favoring Hill, but uh, <laughs> Hill, his stats are still not great looking, but he has had, uh, the last two games were really, really good from him. And uh, he might have fared better than Samsonov did. Now that we're we're done with um, you know saying that Ovechkin and Thompson are night slayers, let's move on to the game, which I was not able to watch. It was on NHL Network, and I can't watch a full game replay anywhere that I can find, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> let me let me double check one more time. It's on there now. Okay, I'll be back. One hour later. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I uh, watched the first two periods and I'm gonna talk about my thoughts on that first before I jump into the third. But honestly, okay, the first goal of uh, Vechkin scores, it's on a power play, which should not have happened. Dubois tripped, fell on his own, and Hurdle got called for tripping, so whatever. Uh, you still need to kill the penalty, even they don't, and Ovechkin sends it in off of Petro's foot and in. So Petro scored <laughs> against Samsonov to make it one nothing Capitals, but it's okay, because Vegas gets a penalty after that, and uh, they didn't score on it, because uh, Vegas really struggled, at least in the first two periods, with maintaining offensive zone possession. They kept dumping and chasing and they couldn't get to the puck before Washington did. Washington did a really good job defensively uh, getting the puck out of their zone and <clears throat> when they didn't, limiting the chances that they did have. Uh, and then <laughs> Jacob Chikorin for the Washington Capitals, who the Washington Capitals, I really admired almost all of their offseason moves. The one I didn't was Dubois because I have no idea what you're doing there, but I guess they had uh, Charlie Lindgren and they acquired Logan Thompson, which is definitely better than uh, Darcy Kemper in my opinion. So you got better in goal without the trade. So you didn't need Kemper, you got his money off the books, but then you used it on Dubois 
and his cap hit, like, I don't, anyway. Not the point, but Chikrin, I liked, uh, and Matt w Raw, oh my goodness. Nick Wa, no, it's the same spelling though, Matt Roy. Uh, who is a really underrated defenseman in the league from uh, LA last season that he went to Washington and I really liked that pickup for them. Chikrin gets the puck because of a turnover in the neutral zone from Vegas and uh, I think it was Strom who sent it over to Chikrin who is wide open and he flings it on and at first I thought oh man that's a really good shot and then I looked at a different angle and it went Underneath Samsonov's arm here, which it <laughs> so bad. So, you need a save there. That was a really bad one for him to let in. He was a little bit screened in front from I think Holtz in front of Chikrin and then Dubois. <laughs> speaking of him, and another Vegas guy were were coming in front of him, but not there quite yet. He, you need him to make that save. It's also Samsonov against his former club, the Washington Capitals, and uh, yeah. One uh, goalie facing the former club had a lot better of a night than the other one, but Vegas gets one back at the very end of the first because of a great play from Brett Howden. Drops it off for Tanner Pearson. They skate in. They drop it off to, I think, I think Fyodor? No, it was Petro. The other side of the ice. Petro flings it on and it comes off the boards. Brett Howden grabs it, banks it in off of Thompson and in to score. It's 2-1, uh, still in Washington's favor, but to, with like seven seconds left to go in the first. So really good, timely goal for Vegas. Terrible time for Washington because, uh, yeah. <laughs> and that play came out of nowhere too. Theodore, uh, they cleared the puck with like 20-ish seconds left, Theodore gets the puck from the other end of the ice, and within nine seconds, because Theodore left with like 16 seconds, they were able to create this play off the backboard and then back and in uh, to score a goal in nine seconds. Like really, really tidy work from Vegas there. There were a lot of times in this game where Vegas, especially on that first power play, were making too many passes. Uh, there's this thing in soccer or football where it's always make the extra pass or whatever, especially in Ted Lasso going to uh, Jamie Tart. They, in hockey, are making too many extra passes and it's preventing them from being able to have opportunities to shoot the puck and get the rebound, which, hey, fun fact, that's how two of the goals that Vegas scored, the two goals that Vegas scored, scored were, uh, you know, rebound chances. Making those extra passes means that Washington's solid defense gets their sticks in the way and it creates turnovers with, like, what happened here. Uh, maybe I'm backwards with the whole where the primary and secondary assists are on the VGK app. But uh, Protoss sends it in. No, Sandine sends it in. Protoss grabs it and finds a wide open Jacob Verana. Jakob Verana? I don't, I'm not sure which one. But he sends it in. He he just drills it in. And Samsonov, again, you'd like him to make a, <laughs> make a save. But uh, Jacob... Jakob Verana had a ton of space, was left when wide alone. I don't know what we were doing defensively. And of course, he, he just drilled it in. Uh, and uh, most of the other Washington, I'm gonna, small tangent that is in reference to most of Washington shots, they were off or wide. And um, I, I saw that a lot, especially from McMichael. And that's really fresh in my mind, but a lot of their shots were just wide of the net. And there were a couple of opportunities for Vegas that just ended up wide, like a shot from Hurdle. And then Barbashev almost scored, but Ovechkin, with a defensive stick on a back check, was able to break up that pass and made sure that <laughs> Barbashev couldn't just bury the puck into a wide open net. And so um, props to Washington for that. And also, thank you for missing the net because who knows how many you would have actually scored because uh, Samsonov was like Swiss cheese in this game and that wasn't great. Thankfully, uh, it's three to one Washington. Vegas is able to get one back and this time on a delayed penalty, which means it doesn't affect our power play, which is uh, interesting because, you know, our power play is good and on the delayed penalty, which in the first uh, power play that we had, the delayed penalty was good until I think it was Theodore or Petro just fumbled the puck and Ovechkin got it out. But on this one, Eichel gets the puck, he comes in, makes a really cool move, quick, takes a shot. Thompson makes the initial save, but it bounces out perfectly to Keegan Colzar, who's able to bury it into the open net to make it a 3-2 game. But like I was saying with the too many passes, this time at the very end of the second, so Washington 
uh, is able to capitalize towards the end of the period. This one from Eichel, who's making a behind the back, no look, backward shovel pass over to the center of the ice. Yeah, Matt Roy picks it off. Uh, really good read from him. Like I was saying, he is a really good uh, free agency acquisition from Washington. And he picks it off, and it's just a two-on-one the other way. And Ovechkin keeps it, and he rips it for his second of the night uh, to make it 4-2 to Washington. I don't know what's happening in the third. I have a feeling. I, I, I saw the shot counter, and I know that we <laughs> sent like 20-some-odd shots on Logan Thompson in the third period. And I think at least 10 of those were in the last five minutes of the game. But... We'll, we'll see. I'll come back. Well, that was straight up doo-doo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't need to watch that. I basically got the same feeling from watching the 10 minute highlight. Uh, they, they do a really good job on those. And honestly, the main takeaway that I got away from watching the entirety of that game is I actually feel less bad about how uh, the game went than when I just looked at the score. Because 5-2 game, yeah, that doesn't look good. Uh, a couple of those goals that Vegas allowed First one, arguably, shouldn't have happened. Really bad uh, goalie goaltending, uh, honestly. And I don't think Samsonov's gonna repeat that, honestly. He's three and one, one, at, three. He was three, one and one entering tonight. So now three, two and one. And his save percentage was a 906. Like he looked shaky to me at times, but I, I think that he'll rebound from this. And Ovechkin, honestly, uh, I don't dislike the guy. He is so good for the sport. He is a generational talent. He is the arguably best goal scorer in the league. We are so uh, lucky to be able to watch him live. We sometimes take for granted uh, just how awesome of a time this is in the hockey world and how this game keeps getting better and better. The players here are getting more and more skilled with the way of how much faster the game is and stuff. And the fact that this guy at this age is being able to do this, this is fantastic. Uh, and nothing but the best for him for the rest of the season, especially because now the Vegas Golden Knights are done playing this team for the rest of the season, which by the way, in case any of y'all are wondering, this is a Mantha shirt because <laughs> it was eight bucks on the NHL shop. And I had a couple of dollars in fan cap. Anyway, so uh, all the best to Logan Thompson and Alex Ovechkin the rest of the year. Although, I did just see he scored two again tonight in the second night half of back-to-back -back against Utah. But then he also went down the tunnel, I guess. Um, slow to get up after a knee-on-knee, -knee, which is not good. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, that, yeah, no, that didn't look good. Happened in the third period, so uh, either way, even if he was good, I would hope that he wouldn't come back out after that, but uh, hopefully he recovers and is able to continue this ridiculous season that he was having. Just gonna knock on every piece of wood I own because I, I genuinely hope that that happens. I really hope that he breaks Gretzky's, Gretzky's record and um, we'll see. But yeah, Vegas, not good. Uh, we dumped and chased and Washington got to the pucks faster than we did and that's not good. You need to get to those faster. You need to have more urgency. And then when we did get that urgency, uh, we just couldn't get Thompson to be moving, and we didn't make it hard on him. We had a lot of quantity of shots in that last 10 minutes, and, and, and Thompson was really good. He stood on his head, he made the saves, and that's what you're asking your goalie to do, right? But I uh, would have liked to have seen us make him move in his crease a little bit more, um, and we didn't do that. So on to the next game. We're on to a five game road trip, which is our longest of the season. It's five games in nine days. <laughs> that, that's fun. First to Canada. I'm off to destroy Canada. They've had it too good for too long. Toronto, then Ottawa, and those are back-to-back -back games. And that is, oh my goodness. <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be great. Anyway, that's gonna be it for game, ooh, 18? Yeah, 18. Uh, game 18's nightly review. Thank you so much for watching and have a good night. <laughs>